let's take a look at a company that's providing local jobs and keeping our families employed because their product is made on Long Island. We provide a service by where we will screen and ensure that no electronic components, counterfeit or substandard components, get into military or aerospace customers. That was the reason for President Obama signing a new law, H.R. 1540, which mandates that contractors now be responsible for their own uh, supplies of counterfeit product or the, or the uh, avoidance of counterfeit products. You can't shift the blame anymore and say it wasn't me who supplied it, I just was in the chain. And if you're a supplier and you want to supply to the military divisions or uh, aerospace industries, you've got to take these new initiatives. And the other service is we will convert Rojas components, which are non-leaded containing components, to a lead-based component for use for military and aerospace companies as well. These components, they go into very sensitive, uh, military applications, some could be responsible for the lives of pilots in, in planes right down to how missiles guidance systems operate and they require extra efforts to ensure that they're only original components and they meet all the original manufacturer's specifications. The BGA Test and Technology Division uh, we employ about 40 people. We'll be able to probably hire an additional 100 people to 200 people in the next two years to keep up with the demand. You can start the test also, right? You can. Currently, because of the Rojas regulation and the European regulations, all these components are only made without lead in them for the soldering purpose of the soldering. But when you make the product without lead in them, they create a problem known as a tin whiskers. You said tin whiskers as in a cap? Yes, yes, absolutely right. Metal grows a whisker. Really? Yes. Metal grows a whisker and uh, that whisker is so thin and the spacing between the two contacts is so small, that's adequate to shard the device. Which is very dangerous for the aerospace applications because it might develop a whisker and shard the two connections or the whole equipment might go bad, or the aircraft might come down because of a tin whisker. So all the aerospace customers want whatever the product that is made with the lead-free spheres to be changed to leaded. That means you cannot completely eliminate the use of lead. But probably the technology growing probably five years or 10 years or 15 years from now, they might come up with technology which might free the entire world with lead. But today we do not have it and in this transition period, this is the best solution we can offer. This is a typical semiconductor chip which is very complicated. It has got approximately about 1500 connections on them. Each small dot indicates a connection. But when it was virtually fabricated, it had a lead-free sphere on that which would make a contact. So it is essential for them to ensure that we remove whatever the tin spheres on that and replace it with the one sphere which has got a certain percentage of lead which is typically 6337 uh, eutectic alloy that's what we replace this with one of the jobs we do is what is known as IC harvesting we take this board and we pick the product out pull the product out in exactly the same fashion how it was mounted which is a very high skill and if it is done in a wrong way the component goes bad and reprocess the component, the component is available for them to be used in a different design. My personal background is I was a semiconductor design engineer. I started with semiconductor design, then I was into semiconductor assembly, then semiconductor quality control, that's my engineering background. Did you think that you'd be able to find a job of this caliber right here in your backyard? Yeah, I mean, stereotypical is probably something like going to West Coast, where, which is called the Silicon Valley. But we, have, we are finding and we are kind of developing a little bit of niche here on the Long Island for the semiconductor devices. We have seen a couple of other little companies emerge. To run this kind of a business in Long Island is a challenge by itself. I think we are successfully kind of managing to grow. In that case, we are just an infant in this industry.